In this video, we'll be showing you how to play Icebox like the pros. Icebox can be one of the more challenging maps in the game to perform on. Maybe players struggle with consistency on Icebox since in some games, it feels like attackers have 100% control of the tempo, and in others, it feels like the defenders are impenetrable. So, if you want to learn how to heat up on Icebox, this video was made for you. We will be looking into how the best teams in the world take advantage of these unique layouts to sway the round in their favor, as well as the meta comps and strategies that go with it. And of course, if you want to put these into practice or have someone to guide you up the rank ladder, then make sure to visit us at ProGuides.com, where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches are always eager to help you reach your goal rank. The link is in the description, and let's head right into it. The unique aspect of Icebox is that each of the two sites includes a planned zone located at a higher elevation. The first step into understanding how to be consistently successful on Icebox is learning how the wind condition of planting and diffusing the bomb is influenced by the site design. A and B site both have an upper platform that is an extension of the site and where many pro teams will try and get the plant down. The main goal of getting the bomb planted in these positions is because of how many angles the game is exposed to for when the defenders try to defuse. You will see this strategy used a majority of the time on the A bomb site in the window, or on the B bomb site planted from mid. Here, you can see TSM using Sage's wall to ensure a safe plant on top site. The A plant was so strong, in fact, that many pro teams' entire defensive setup was changed to counter this plant. Here, you can see teams like TSM, The Guard, Optic, and FaZe all use this defensive Viper wall to help stop the plant going through. The top B site plant is much less common and only ever used when teams decided on a mid-heavy play. Before jumping into what agents pro teams are running on Icebox, let's first talk about the question of the day. Today's question is, do you think the changes on B-side are good? I think that the changes are interesting for sure, but it doesn't really make the defender or attacker strategy any different, which is kind of what the whole point of making those changes was in the first place. So it's hard to call it a good change, but it is still a change regardless. So it's been fun adapting to the new angles to deal with. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and let's head into the team comps. Icebox is both a combination of choke points and low range angles once you gain access to the site and while working up mid. This leads to the core of most rosters to be Chamber, Viper, Sage, and Sova since all these agents provide amazing map control and information, while the other agent slot is flexed between KO, Jet, or Omen depending on how their team wants to play. The agent with the highest win rate out of the games we observed would be Jet. Viper and Chamber offer some of the best map control in the entire game since Chamber's trip can be actively held at any distance. Viper, on the other hand, is used more as a Sentinel controller hybrid. On attack, her wall does a fantastic job at blocking most angles on both sides for a take. And on defense, her wall is suppressive for attackers to push into and one of the best tools for retaking a site with your team. Sova's whole kit gets insane value on a map like Breeze because of how open the sites become past their entrances. Interestingly enough, Fade was played instead of Sova by C9 in their match against Optic where C9 had a decisive victory. Sage is arguably one of the most important agents on Icebox because of how her wall allows teams to play post plants. Jet is a solid pick on Icebox and she takes advantage of the map's verticality and is one of the best agents in the game to wield the AWP. The Duelist role is seriously underrepresented on Icebox because of how easily accessible bomb sites are when using agents like Viper and Sova. So many pro teams value the extra utility with the other agents. But when a Duelist is wanted in a team comp, none really compared to Jet in terms of movement and impact. The biggest advantage she brings to the team is the ability to pressure the neutral zone safely with her AWP. A and B site can both be approached by the attacking team from multiple easy to pressure angles. So having an agent like Jet be able to make attackers think twice about peeking certain angles provides a ton of value. Her updrafts are perfect whether on B or A for using off angles enemies wouldn't expect otherwise. Not to mention her ultimate that not only can she outmaneuver players with rifles, but she is perfectly accurate at all Icebox long range angles. When pro teams play Icebox, most value Sentinel agents above all else, mainly because of how approachable the sites are for attackers. So agents that stop slow pushes are ideal for this map. Chamber is perfect for Icebox and he sees most of his play on the B site. The reason for this is because he is able to hold all of B main with a forward position and he is able to TP out if the enemy is trying to push the site. His trip a majority of the time is placed either in kitchen or under tube to try to stop a lurk in its tracks. Like Jet, Chamber is one of the few agents that can reliably AWP and that pressure is optimal for holding sites that are undermanned. Sage is a core member of many pro teams rosters simply for her wall. Her wall is used in order to get the bomb planted down safely on the expansive sites. The wall helps ensure the planter doesn't get spammed through the smoke since the plant spots offer little cover. This is especially true on the B site. Viper on Icebox is played as a sort of sentinel controller hybrid. This is because her utility provides not only cover and control for her team, but doubles as a deterrent for attackers pushing her site. If you couple her molly with a sage or chamber slow, it's enough to single-handedly end the round. She is mostly seen on A site since there are so many angles for the defense to hold, and her wall does an exceptional job at delaying the attacker's progress. Just because Viper is an amazing sentinel on this map doesn't mean she isn't the go-to controller as well. 
no other agent in the game comes close to blocking off the amount of space Viper does. Pro teams like the Guard and C9 use her wall flawlessly to section off the B site for an easier site take. While her A site wall is perfect for blocking off the top of screen's position and stopping mid players from helping those holding down A. Her ultimate is also one of the best in the game for locking down those open sites. On defense, making an almost impossible to take site and attacking making an almost impossible to defuse spike. Viper on Icebox is one of the rare instances of an agent that can single-handedly define a meta. Sova has seen little contest when it comes to the initiator role. His drone and dart combo provides the most information out of any character in the game, only being rivaled by Fade currently. However, not many teams other than C9 has experimented with Fade on Icebox, meaning we need more information to conclude if she is the stronger agent than Sova. Sova is hard to compete with since this drone clears out all the dangerous angles on B main and gets almost full information on A even after the nerfs to his drone. His ultimate is also fantastic for stopping and picking off spike planters, since like stated before, the plant spots are unlimited and dangerous if the team doesn't set up correctly. Defending on Icebox can be an extremely tall task for teams that are unorganized. The bomb sites have many routes for attackers to pressure, especially A, since cover on site is limited and rotations take an extremely long time compared to other maps. The most important factor to take into account when defending on Icebox is your team's plan. Most pro teams have two options, play on-site defense or an off-site defense, aka retake. Most pro teams see playing retake as a more reliable option for defending. C9, for example, plays a retake-oriented defense. They will leave Chamber and Viper to play the respective sites alone, and have them retreat off-site when pressured. Then they will stake a retake together with the mid players consisting of Sova, Sage, and their one flex agent. Sova and Sage are amazing agents for mid since Sova can gather information on who is in mid and B, while Sage plays mid so she can either slow or wall mid to stop a push or quickly rotate to the site being executed on. A site Icebox is arguably one of the hardest to defend sites in the entire game. Pro teams know this and will often let their duelist or sentinel play the site alone and try to get one or two frags before either retreating or going down themselves. Playing forward on top of pipes or pressure jail is something you will see a lot of teams do in pro play, especially by Chamber or Jet since they have the safest neutral zone pressuring. Or you can have Viper play on A site and use her utility to delay incoming pushes. The wall you will see thrown most of the time is on top of 410 across the bomb site. It blocks vision from oncoming attackers trying to plant and vision from the defending bomb plant. Since the spike plant is hard to hold for the defenders, it's also hard to hold for the attacking team. Successfully retaking A revolves mainly around your Viper wall and your information gathering util. You always want to retake to begin with either a Sova drone, Dart to reveal enemy locations, followed by your Viper Sage wall to cover the bomb. Always take into account what kind of bomb defusal util the attackers have to stop your retake. This could be util like Viper's Molly's or Sova's ultimate. If they have this utility, you're going to need to bait it out or take down these agents before the defuse can safely go through. The hardest bomb to defuse is if they are planting in the top site window. If you notice this in your games, asking your Viper to play A as her wall is the most reliable way for you to block angles for a retake. The B site is easier to defend since the attacking team only has one entrance on the site if they don't pressure mid. Chamber is the perfect agent to hold down B since he can apply pressure in the neutral zone then safely TP to the back site to help stop the play or prepare for retake. The other half of defending B is done through mid since a well-timed lurk will destroy a B defense. Most chambers will place their tripwire in kitchen to stop any kind of kitchen pressure and rely on Sage and Sova to hold their mid. The most important fact to remember when defending the B site is to not overstay your welcome. Your teammates for the most part are going to have long rotates to get to you, so it's much better to give the site and play with your team than swing in a 4 and 5 people trying to pressure the site. Play off angles and then play for a retake. For most B retakes, you're not going to have access to your Viper wall, so it revolves around your Sage's wall and your Viper's orb. The attackers have limited space to work with once the spike is planted, so if you have a member of your team offing, it's a good idea to try to give them time to try to look for an opening pick on players playing back yellow or in B main. Use your information gathering tools to clear out back yellow before you push into B main. The reason for this is because if attacks go unchecked in yellow, they form a crossfire on the defenders trying to retake. This will lead to your teammates being timinged and unable to trade. If the bomb is planted B for mid, it's important to make sure you don't give up your ground around B main and yellow. The pressure you put on the attacking team is extremely important. Work with your team and try to time your retake together. Attacking on Icebox is one of the easier maps in the game to gain site control, while holding it is a different story though. The secret to a good attacking side is a good post-plant plan. Decide with your team before the round starts if you want to get the bomb plant and play the bomb, or get the plant and try to hold the site itself. Most pro teams opt for defending the bomb plant rather than the site itself, since there is little cover on the sites themselves. The optimal plant on A site would be up in the top site window, and a mid lurk is optional but not necessary for taking this bomb site. While the B site default plant is optimal since the plant is the safest, if the bomb can be planted for mid as well as yellow, that is better but is much harder to guarantee a safe plant for your team. 
The B-side offers much less cover post-plant than A-side does, so a mid-lark is extremely valuable to stop the defender's retake. Attacking the A-side can be done with 4 or even 5 members of your team pressuring through A-main since there are so many routes for attack. Most A-side takes begin with a Sovadar above the belt that clears pipes, maze, jail, and any other defenders trying to slip their way into the nest. Here you can see TSM shoot this Sovadar while beginning their A-take. The best Viper wall to be placed is on top of screens that also block CT. This way, the mid players have a harder time backing up their team on A. Once close A main is clear, you can begin to drone over the top of pipes to clear the 410 and back site, giving your team the information needed to safely walk up. If your team is planning to play the bomb, use Sage's wall on top site so you can plant safely in the window. If you plan to play on site, use Sage's wall to block off the back site from defenders. If you do have a teammate lurking mid, you want them to begin applying pressure when the bomb is planted. When playing post plant A, it's very important to make sure your teammates are able to trade each other's lives and defend the spike. If the bomb is planted safe on default, then it doesn't make sense to play post plant from belt since you can't hold the spike. It's also important to make sure your teammates aren't all stacked in the same position. The bomb site is spacious, so make sure your team isn't KO'd by one piece of utility. Lastly, if you have some sort of diffuse delaying util, make sure to play offsite and get value of that utility. The AWP is also an extremely valuable weapon for playing post plant not only on A but B as well, so just make sure you have a good plan for repositioning that revolves around the bomb. Attacking B can either feel like the site is free every time or feel like a free round loss. In order to give B site the best chance of success, you almost always want to drone up B main with Sova. The reason for this is because this is most likely the area where enemies will be set up and is always the hardest to clear. Not to mention if the drone gets to tag on a player on site, it's almost always too risky for your team to take that aggressive angle to take advantage of that tag. After the drone clears B main, you could always use his dart to clear back yellow. This is where the Sage and Viper come into play. You want Viper's wall to cut off the corner of site closest to B main to help your bomb planter get it down safely. In order to bolster this attack, most pro level Sage plays will wall on site to stop enemies from spamming the position. Here you can see C9 use both Sage and Viper wall to secure the plant. While attacking B, many teams will want their chamber to lurk up the middle to apply pressure to the oncoming defenders. This will make it so that all their attention isn't on B main and yellow. After the bomb has been planted, holding down B site can be super challenging if your team is in space correctly. You will notice how many pro teams will always have one or max two people yellow, and the rest will play B main and mid applying pressure. You have limited space trying to hold bomb plant B, so you need to take advantage of every angle at your disposal. The reason for this is so that your team can create crossfire effectively while holding down the bomb. You can also have your chamber or jet AWP on attack in order to hold those long angles from yellow to snowman. Playing on site or in danger is in the position's name, dangerous, especially if the enemy team has any kind of coordination. In this clip, you can see C9 playing their post plan player with one yellow, one in the Viper ultimate between yellow and main, one player in main itself, and their chamber kind of lurking mid. This forms perfect pressure points that make retaking the site extremely difficult for the enemy team. Icebox has gone through a ton of changes and is now regarded as one of the most balanced maps in all of Valorant. Hopefully this video will help your macro play on Icebox and help your team make the best decisions possible no matter where they can all be. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and I'll see you all again in the next one.